GG. That's what's up. See that three though, though. 46, what? You ain't gonna see too many people higher than that up in here. TY, I think I know TY. Oh no, nah, because he, he knows he's PG, that's not. What's that? Rebound. Tell him, bro. It's all about focusing, bro. You gotta really lock in. Yeah. Good squad of Like, if they was to give speed with better angles, bro, ain't too many people standing in front of it. Good shot. Good shot, Thunder. Shot, good shot. Oh, he messed up. Switch. Good D. He missed. My bad. Damn, I can't locate that. Wow. Huh? Yeah. 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 Good pass. Can you hear it? Good shot. Good rebound. Get that rebound. Good pass. The game is just so slow. Good rebound. Good shot. Good rebound. Good shot. Good teamwork. That's on me, I reach. Good shot. Work. What's up? Um, I need a toy. Okay, I'm gonna get it for you. They need right wing then wrap. Good pass. The box up. Good deed. Good steal. You might miss that one. What's up? Huh? You want to milk? 
Ah, oh, that's on me. Time to stop in the middle, Jay Z. Made it. Mm. I, ain't, I, I didn't put my hand. Rebound. Green. The rebound. Race. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't going through it. <laughs> Man. Hey, that boy right there. Man. Fuck. You got to hit this one. Good bucket, good bucket, good bucket. That's all. <laughs> hey, be, hey, this is be make you feel sad, don't it? Uh-uh, no. That ain't no pouch. <laughs> Daddy. You can't do that. Daddy. What? Daddy. Listen, boy, I be feeling make you feel bad, bro. Come on, get that. Boy, I ain't going, going through the motions. <laughs> huh? Yeah? Oh. She just put it on it, I guess. Make it look like that. Oh, you good? <laughs> you don't need change. Oh, yeah, it's good. Stop putting on it. Understand that the rich and successful are creators. They create opportunities, they create relationships, they create money, they create content, they, they create jobs, they create things that give them a sense of fulfillment and significance. Welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. Hey guys, welcome to the Bedros Coolian Show. I'm Bedros Coolian, and I want to first and foremost come out the gate and thank you guys once again. You guys are hitting records on YouTube. Now we are up to 22 hundred new subscribers a day on YouTube. So thank you first off for subscribing. Thank you for sharing. I don't know if you know this or not, but about 75% of our viewers on YouTube are not subscribed. We are now growing at a clip of 2,200 new subscribers a day, and that's because of you. So thank you. If you're watching or listening to this, I should say, on the old podcast platforms like iTunes and Spotify, hey, man, come hang out with us on YouTube as well. You can actually see and hear what we are doing. So anyway, guys, I want to jump into this show today. Um, this particular episode is really focused on what the rich and successful do, right? Somebody once asked me like, hey, Bedros, uh, what is it that the rich and successful do that regular people don't? And I was like, damn, that's a really good question. The reason I think that's a really good question is because I remember being there. I remember working at old LA Fitness back in the day as a personal trainer, and many of my clients back then, in my mind, were rich and successful because if they could afford to you know, work with a personal trainer and pay 400 to 600 dollars a month for a personal trainer. And trust me, they weren't paying me, they were paying the gym. I was getting paid 12 bucks an hour back then. And I was like, man, they're rich and successful. And I would start seeing patterns that they had in their life, the way they carried themselves. And when I would talk to them in between sets, I would see this consistency that 
started to paint a picture for me. And I was like, okay, all right, I'm starting to see what rich and successful do. And as I started to emulate what they did, I began to achieve the outcome that they have. And today I get to be rich and successful, right? Um, but anyway, so all that said, let's dive into this episode. And I really want to uh, let you know that each one of these things I'm about to share with you is like a muscle, right? Uh, you know this, when you go to the gym, you work out, you develop your muscles you do that by lifting weights you do that by doing it consistently you do that over a long period of time before you know it your muscles get bigger they, they get stronger if you're if you're dieting right and you're and you're doing your training right you're also getting leaner and you're using more weight well the same thing applies here all of these things some of them are traits some of our skills some of them are routines these are things that you could actually through repetition improve so make no mistake about it this is what the rich and successful do so let's jump into it thing number one is the rich and successful people that i know are outcome focused they are very much outcome focused what i mean by that is everything they do they do it with an end in mind they don't just trying to wing things. They don't just try and figure things out. They always go, what does winning look like? In fact, when I have my half day coaching sessions with my clients, right? My coaching and consulting clients, as soon as they come in for their half day, I sit down and I tell them, Hey, what does a win look like for you when we're done with this half day coaching session? And they might say, well, a uh, win looks like to me, uh, I have more clarity on how to take my company from you know, $400,000 a year in revenue to $2 million over the next three years. Okay, got it. Got it. So you want a game plan to 2 million. Some people say, I want to be able to scale a new company. And this is what the company is. And here's how much I want to scale it to. That's what a win looks like. Other people say, I'm making good money. So a success or a win looks like, you know, having more time freedom to be able to spend with my family. And then once I know what their outcome is, then during that half day session, I can help them create a blueprint, a game plan that they can execute on over the next few months to get to that outcome, right? So rich and successful people are very outcome focused. And if you're not outcome or results focused, you're just kind of winging it. You're just hoping that something good comes out of whatever it is you're doing you're probably not gonna make it. The other thing that rich and successful people do is they're ruthlessly guarding their time. Listen, your time is being pulled away from you, left and right. Uh, people want your time, social media wants your time, people want a piece of you. The more successful you get, the more fame you develop, you are going to get hit up by people who want to get a piece of what you have, right? And it's not that you should turn people away and be an asshole to them, I'm not saying that, but what I am saying is, if you are not ruthlessly guarding your time, you will very quickly run out of time and you won't have time for your family, you won't, time for your, you won't have time for your health and fitness, you won't have time for your business because you'll be out there doing too much for too many people. Believe it or not, uh, about three years ago, I got to a place where I realized, holy crap, man, I'm doing like two or three podcasts a week for other people, right? People would reach out to me on social media, on Instagram. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, follow me on Instagram in the des description box there on YouTube. Uh, we've got the link. Follow me on Instagram at Bedros Koulian. Uh, would love to see you there as well. But people would reach out to me, man, on uh, Instagram and they'd be like, hey, Bedros, any chance I can get you on my podcast. And look, I want to help people. I want to be able to be that guy that kind of gives you a boost up, right? But I found myself saying yes so many times that I was spending, you know, three full hours a week on podcasts. Well, there's also a little mental preparation time for that. So let's say 20 minutes of mental prep because I want to really deliver the value for that person. So in whole, I was spending about four hours a week. Now at the level that I'm at, four hours a week can make me a lot more money. Hell, four hours a week can, can be a lot more enjoyable time with my family. Four hours a week, I could really dedicate even more to my mobility and flexibility and my training. Fuck man, I'm 40, 48 years old. I can't just go into the gym like you young bucks and start benching and squatting fuck it takes me a good 20 minutes like an old jalopy car to warm up to do my mobility to get flexibility in my joints and then i start hitting it right so four hours a week is a lot so understand that if you are not ruthlessly guarding your time so they are going to take it away from you the other thing that the rich and successful have mastered is that they are non-negotiables there are non-negotiables in their life and so many of those non-negotiables 
they apply like like for example a non-negotiable for me is i will never go to the grocery store i will never get my car washed i will never change a light bulb in my house i will never take out the garbage that doesn't mean that stuff doesn't get done there's just people that do it for me right because if i am doing things that i should not be doing then i don't have the time capacity and bandwidth to be doing the higher level things that only I can do, right? Let's face it, my housekeeper can take out the garbage, change the light bulb, et cetera, do the laundry. Uh, I've, got, I've got great assistants who can, who can go and wash my cars for me and gas them up and, and get them ready for whatever I need to do. If I'm doing those things and I'm not focusing on my zone of genius, right? Because we all have a zone of genius. Because I can't have my assistants come sit here and run the Bedros Cooling Show. I can't have my assistants go and run a half day coaching session with a client who's building a half a billion dollar company, but I can have them do things that I don't want to do that need to get done so that I can buy back my time. So understand that you got to have non-negotiables and those non-negotiables really are the things that keep you focused on your zone of genius. Now, another thing that I found, another trait that the rich and successful do is they have massive impulse control, right? Let's face it, it is very easy to have distractions these days. It is very easy to want very quick results on things. And the rich and successful understand that they have to control their impulses. In other words, if they're focused on their work, they're not just gonna stop and and go on social media and fuck around there. They're not going to then go through YouTube and start watching cat videos. They are focused on the work at hand, on the outcome results driven work at hand, and they control their impulses for food, for alcohol, for drugs, for entertainment, for all those things. They do those things only after they have done the work required of them, right? And the beauty of that is that you begin to establish the habit or the muscle of delayed gratification. And there was a study done uh, a few years ago, you may have seen this with little kids. They sat those kids down in a little room, it's like a focus group, and they told this, these kids, a whole bunch of kids, one at a time, hey, here's, a, here's one marshmallow on a plate. If you want, you could eat this marshmallow. We're just gonna walk away and uh, we'll be back in 10 minutes. And if you wanna eat it, you can. But when we come back 10 minutes from now, if that marshmallow is there, then we'll give you a second marshmallow, right? And what they found was those kids that were able to put off immediate gratification by waiting patiently 10 minutes in front of that tasty marshmallow, and they delayed gratification and therefore got that second marshmallow, they were the ones who were more focused, and that's a trait you can develop. They were the ones that did better in school. They were the ones that were greater athletes. And so understand, delayed gratification and impulse control is a predetermining factor to success. Also, the rich and successful are the types of people that create more and consume less. I have found that successful people who really make a lot of money, have a lot of impact and influence, are constantly creating things, right? They're creating opportunities, they're creating events, they're creating content, um, podcasts, YouTube, social media posts that are helping humanity or helping grow their businesses. They're always in a creation mode. They're creating job opportunities. The rich and successful are creators. The broke and the losers of humanity are consumers. They're constantly wasting their time consuming television, Netflix, content, social media, whatever, right? Listen, man, I love the fact that you listen to my show or watch it on YouTube. However, what other things are you wasting your time on? Like, if you are just watching my show or listening to my show just to get the dopamine hit, but you're not gonna take action on it, quite honestly, don't bother, don't bother. Save yourself the 30, 40 minutes, 20 minutes, whatever, however long the episode is, and go do something else of value, right? I'm being honest with you here, man. Because if you are finding yourself that you're constantly consuming, not just food, but content, information, et cetera, and not applying it to your life, or you're just consuming content for the dopamine hits of entertainment or pornography or whatever, understand that the rich and successful are creators. They create opportunities, they create relationships, they create money, they create content, they, they create jobs, they create things 
that give them a sense of fulfillment and significance. And so each time you're doing something and you're like, ah, oh, feeling weird about yourself, because you know this, when you are in a consumption mode, you feel your conscience telling you like, dude, you're wasting time. You ought to be doing something more productive. Stop doing this. But then you go, fuck it, one more scroll. Fuck it, one more scroll. And you do know what all those little scrolls are, right? Like whether you're watching YouTube shorts or Instagram stories or TikToks, that's, that's um, a dopamine hit, right? And the, the actual mechanism behind it is called variable response. Just like when someone goes to Las Vegas and they keep putting a dollar or $5 in the slot machine, they're hoping that the next time they win, that the next time they win, the next time they win, and they are reinforcing their habit of losing money, of gambling. And every now and again, they do win, but they may have put in 400 bucks to win 200 bucks, but that reinforces the behavior of, see, you do win from time to time, so then they put in more money. Do you really think Las Vegas produces massive winners all the time? If they did, Las Vegas wouldn't be the huge money suck that it is, right? They wouldn't have those mega hotels and they wouldn't have the mega resorts. They wouldn't have the mega shows if more people were winning. The reality is more people are losing because they are there consuming, right? Those that created the hotels, those that created the shows, those that created the lights, those that created the buildings, those that created the experiences and jobs, they are the ones that are having true fulfillment and significance. I want you to be a creator. The rich and successful focus on personal development, right? They focus on becoming a better version of themselves. They focus on maybe reading books. They focus on having coaches and mentors. They focus on working through their shit, their psychological trauma that is limiting and, 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 and destroying their success. Things that are maybe causing self-sabotage or this glass ceiling that you keep butting up against, you don't have to do that. You know, you could focus on personal growth, personal development, work with a therapist, do your ayahuasca, do read books, apply to your life. And before you know it, you're a fucking better version of yourself. And I'm here to tell you, and you've heard me say this before, you know, sixes and sevens are not going to create level eight, nine, and 10 money or meaning or opportunity or fulfillment. So if you're a level six or a seven, you first have to develop into a eight or a nine to be able to get that level of success and fulfillment. Got it? Good. The next thing, the rich and successful are athlete minded. And when I figured this out, I was like, holy smokes. Like I, one of my personal training clients was a Sony executive and she truly treated herself like an athlete. Like <clears throat> she was one of those people that worked out like a beast man when i trained her worked out like a beast like she was getting ready for some high olympic level sport right she just ate and tracked her macros and i was like hey i'm just curious like you're in great shape you maintain really good like body fat percentages you're you're lean and 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 fit like why are you so worked up about your health and fitness she goes at the level that i operate for sony like this is what's expected of me and i was like wow that's badass only years later as i started to become an entrepreneur i realized like holy crap man being an entrepreneur is like a sport i treat my body as though i'm an athlete i eat right i sleep right i train right i make sure that i keep away negative influences i never hang around with people that gossip or or act like crop dusters in life i'm always focused on leveling up and being an athlete, like no different than an athlete would train for basketball or football or or the uh, MLB for a baseball game, right? And they're going to go to to the highest level of their sport. Like you have to be able to consider yourself an athlete. And you go, look, if I'm an athlete of whatever your business is or whatever the thing is you want to do, or let's say you're just a salesperson for a company. Let's say you're a marketer for a company. Let's say you're second in command for a company, right? Like my, my CEO, Bryce, technically he works, he has a job, right? But let me tell you, he treats himself like an athlete. And because of that, he makes big decisions. He makes big money. He has great impact and influence. I mean, my team that's in here right now, like they treat themselves like athletes. They're, they're, they're in good shape. They keep a positive mental attitude. And if any of them showed up with any kind of negative vibes, they'd be like, man, we can't hang out because that is contagious, right? Could you imagine some athlete, uh, you know, a week or two before a football player, a week or two before the Super Bowl is like, well, you know, I'm hanging out with my loser friends. Let's see how this impacts me. 
immediately the outcome is going to be negative, right? You want to hang out with people that are vibrating on a very high level. You want to hang out with people that have a high frequency. You want to hang out with people that are constantly creating. You want to hang out with people that are outcome focused. You want to hang out with people that have non-negotiables. You want to hang out with people that have big dreams and visions and they are just fucking focused on achieving those visions. Those are the types of people that you want to hang out with. That's what an athlete would do. So you, whether you work for someone or you work for yourself, if you start treating yourself like an athlete instead of some fat fuck, then you will achieve higher levels of money and meaning. Also, two more things to go here. The rich and successful focus on being control freaks. Like I'm an absolute control freak, the most successful and rich people I know. Because by the way, there are people that are like fat and out of shape and they are rich and successful in terms of money, right? But they have a shitty life, their blood pressure's through the roof, they're always struggling with anxiety and depression, they're always just one little trigger away from having a fucking meltdown on someone, an emotional meltdown on someone. I don't want to be that guy. Like, I want to have a fucking awesome life, man. Like, I go one wheeling with my son. We play ping pong. We go to the gym and work out. We'll go surf in the summer times. Like, I have time freedom. I have I have core values in my life. And, and I have that because I've become a control freak. I control every variable about me, right? Like, I control who I get calls from. I've got on my iPhone there, I've got, I think, 192 people <laughs> whose numbers I once kept in my contacts blocked. Not for any other reason. And some of them I love dearly. Not for any other reason, though, because they are negative. Like, hey, Bedros, did you see this negative thing happening in the world? Hey, Bedros, did you see who's president? Hey, Bedros, did you see that that ice cream, liquor, hair sniffing, border opening motherfucker did something stupid again? Well, what does that matter to me, right? Right now he's in office and we're looking for a better replacement. But you bringing that to my attention does what? only brings negativity into my life. Now I might have some levels of subconscious fear and doubt and uncertainty in our country, and that might bleed into the work I do, into the decisions I make. And so I always tell people like, hey man, don't bring that negative shit to me, all right? If you see something good, you see a firefighter save a kitten, text me about it. You see someone win, win fucking the gold medal, you text me about it. You see someone fucking fight off the enemy, uh, a carjacker, you fucking text me about it. But otherwise, don't bring me that shit. If they keep bringing me that shit, they get blocked, right? I, you have to control every element in your life. And, and my friend Craig Ballantyne has this really awesome saying that I've adopted and I wanna share with you, and that is to control what you can, and there's a lot of variables that you can control, cope with what you can't control, and then concentrate on what counts. I mean, isn't that a brilliant statement? Control what you can't can, cope with what you can't control, and concentrate on what counts. And if you do that, you become this control freak. And I know control freak has a negative connotation, but in reality, don't you wanna control your day? Sure you do. So you better have a morning routine, some rituals, some rules to operate by. Like, I, I'm not gonna just be like, oh, I'm gonna skip my morning workout and work out in the evening. Like, that's an out of control day for me. I'm not just gonna skip my 30 ounces of water first thing in the morning. That's an out of control day. If I can control as many of the variables in my life that I can, I am literally predicting a better life. That doesn't mean that I'm gonna get it that day, right? I've had days where I've tried to control every fucking element that I can in my, in my day, and the day's just gone to hell. And this speaks to what my dear friend, Alan Cosgrove says, and Alan Cosgrove, he survived stage four cancer. Awesome human being. He says, Bedros, after you've gone through stage four cancer and there is no stage five, he goes, I only have good days and great days. I was like, wow, that's interesting, man. So as much as I try and control every variable in my life, I do find myself in a position where sometimes like, man, the, the world just had it out for me. And that's okay. Tomorrow's gonna be a better day, right? Like this too shall pass. But understand, you've gotta be a control freak, control as many variables as you can, cope with whatever variables you can't control, and then concentrate on what counts. Boom, got it. All right, next thing, you gotta go to battle with everything. And I wrote that down here because if you go to battle with everything, you will win. Oftentimes, uh, and what's the best way to say this? Uh, basically, I'm asking you to be committed. Be committed, right? If you are committed, then you are more likely to win. If you're just involved in something, there's a chance, a high probability that you'll fail. Uh, the best example of this that I could share with you is on a, on a plate of ham and eggs, the pig was committed, the chicken was involved, right? 
You want to be fully committed. You want to go to battle with everything. Like when I go to the gym, I'm like, all right, man, next 45 minutes, you're going to battle with your body. You're going to battle with the inner bitch. You're going to battle with, with time, right? Time is trying to erode my muscles. I am getting older. Time is trying to atrophy my muscles. I go to battle against the inner bitch, the conversation in my head. I go to battle against the weights. I go to battle against everything that is trying to limit my fitness and health development. And then when I do that, then I come to work. I go to battle against the economy. I go to battle against the competition. I go to battle against whatever it is that I'm doing. If I just show up here and I just deliver a mediocre podcast, how much value is that for you? You're going to be like, this guy, I can tell he's just not even committed to this podcast. But I fucking show up every week for you. I prepare content on this fucking notepad for you. I do this so that you will have the advantage that I didn't have in life. I am fully committed. I'm not just involved in this. I am fully committed in serving you. And I absolutely understand that as as the show grows bigger, as the subscribers grow, uh, that some of you are going to become customers. Some of you are going to end up owning a Fit Body Bootcamp franchise. You're going to end up becoming one of my franchisees. Awesome, man. We'll make money together. Some of you are going to are going to start using truly. By the way, people, I got a few comments uh, asking me like, "What's in the shaker cup?" First of all, I'm, I am a little thirsty. Allow me to take that sip. So, what I keep in my truly shaker cup here is one scoop of everyday fit and that is a our um, exclusive hydration formula and then i put one packet of the truly wellness shot which is vitamin c vitamin d zinc uh ginger turmeric um, black pepper cayenne pepper and there was one more thing that i forget but i always keep that in here i drink two of these a day uh i travel everywhere i'm doing speaking gigs everywhere i'm around a bunch of people shaking hands hugging babies um i never get sick but that's what i do uh, keeps my hydration high with great electrolytes and keeps my immune system high and inflammation low through the wellness shot so there you go plug for truline uh my supplement company this is all great stuff by the way all purity tested all that stuff but i lost my train of thought here yes okay so go to battle right we want to go to battle with everything we're doing. We want to do everything passionately. I once said this during a speaking event and it made a whole bunch of buttholes pucker. So allow me to help you pucker your butthole too. I said, let me tell you the difference between going to battle for, some, for something, like doing it with passion, doing it with commitment versus just kind of dabbling, just kind of doing it, right? I go, it's the difference between fucking and having sex. Look, man, when you are fucking, you are just making mad, passionate love. Do you care if you get a hamstring cramp or do you care if it's ouch, 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 you're on my hair? Or do you care if the thermostat needs to be adjusted because you're sweating? You don't give a fuck when you're fucking, when you're making passionate love because nothing will stop you. The house could burn down and you will continue loving that woman up, right? However, if you're just kind of having sex, oh, hold on, baby, I got a cramp. Oh, hey, you're on my hair. Let's change positions. Oh, you know what? Hold on. It's getting hot. Let me change the thermostat. I want to fucking have sex. I want to make passionate love. I want to fuck, right? That is the difference. You got to go to battle. You got to go to battle in the bedroom. There you go. That's the point I'm making here. And finally, finally, the rich and successful. So, so what did we learn here today, guys? We learned that the rich and successful fuck and they don't just have sex. That's what we learned, fellas. All right, and then finally, they're rich and successful. They don't gossip, right? Just no gossip, no fucking small talk, no, no, hey, how's the weather? I got an app for that. I know how the weather is. I can go and figure out the weather in fucking Zimbabwe. I don't need to ask, do small talk with you. How's the weather? Like, we don't talk about sports. How's your team doing? You don't own the fucking team. Why are you wearing someone else's name on your back anyway? My team did this. You know more about the fucking sports team and the athletes on that team than you do about your own fucking family. You know more stats about your team than you do with your, you don't know your own body uh, mass index. You don't know your body fat percentage. You don't know how much lean muscle you hold. You don't even know your fucking bench squat and deadlift. Yet you might know what your team's batting average is. Get the fuck out of here, right? And I share that with you because the rich and successful focus on the things that matter, not on gossip or small talk or shallow conversations. Man, we go deep. 
So what we do around here, we go deep. And so with that said, guys, here's what I want to impress upon you, that there is a formula to success and success leaves clues. And so as you go and you do these stuff, you, you focus on the outcome, you ruthlessly guard your time, you, you focus on the non-negotiables, you create more and you consume less. You control your impulses and delay gratification. You treat yourself like an athlete. You focus on personal development. You go to battle with everything. You become a control freak and you ensure that you don't gossip and you don't surround yourself with any bitches that gossip. Then you become a rich and successful person who can impact more lives, have greater influence and really live a life of meaning, right? So with that said, guys, I'm just here to tell you, thank you so much for again, helping me grow the show, for sharing the content, for taking the stuff that I teach here and applying it to your life. I love reading the comments on the YouTube section as well. Uh, and if you ever have a question for me, by the way, leave it in the YouTube comments, right? Because that's where Leighton will grab the comments from there in my Instagram stories. He'll grab uh, questions from and he will then share it during the Q&A when we do it here in the studio. And so with that said, I'm here to tell you that average is the enemy. Success is your responsibility and everything in your life can change for the better when you decide to flip the switch. Thank you so much, guys. I will talk to you soon.